September 14th. On this day we keep the feast of the universal exaltation of the precious and life-giving cross. Saint Constantine the Great, whom we celebrate on the 21st of May, was preparing to march on Rome to confront his rival Maxentius, when the sign of the life-giving cross appeared to him in the midday sky, surrounded with the inscription, By this sign you shall conquer. He therefore had his standards adorned with the sign of the cross, and he won a brilliant victory, which enabled him to assume power over the entire Roman world and to assure the triumph of Christianity. In the twentieth year of his reign, in 326, St. Constantine sent his mother, St. Helen, to Jerusalem to venerate the holy places and to find the site of the holy sepulchre and of the cross that was covered by rubble from building works done at the time of Adrian when the city had been enlarged. Relying upon the oral tradition of the faithful, St. Helen found the precious trophy along with the crosses on which the two thieves had hung and the three nails that had nailed the life-giving body of the Saviour, but she could see no way of telling which was the cross of Christ. The healing of a dying woman at the touch of the holy wood enabled Macarius, the Patriarch of Jerusalem, to identify the cross of Christ, for no miracle was worked by the other two crosses. Then the Queen and her whole court worshipped the holy cross, and they kissed it with great devotion. The people who had gathered in great numbers at the place also wanted to share in this grace, or at least so ardent was their love for Christ, to see from afar the instrument of our redemption. So the patriarch mounted the ambo, and taking the cross in both hands, raised it on high so that all could see it, while the crowd exclaimed, Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy. This was the occasion of the institution in all the churches of the exaltation of the precious cross, not only in memory of the event, but also to show forth this instrument of shame as having become our pride and our joy. By recalling the action of the Patriarch and by elevating the Holy Cross at the four points of the compass to the chant of Kyrie eleison, Christians show today that in mounting the cross, Christ desired to reconcile all things to himself, uniting creation in all its height, in all its depth, and to its farthest bounds in his body, so that we may have access through him to God the Father. Blessed is our God, always now and forever, to the age of creation. Amen. Glory to thee, our God, glory to thee. O heavenly King, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, who art in our places and fillest all things, treasury of good things and giver of life, come and dwell in us and cleanse us from every impurity and save our souls, O good one. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, be gracious unto our sins. Master, pardon our iniquities. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Yes. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, to the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. 
Save, O Lord, thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Grant thou unto the faithful victory over adversaries. And by the power of thy cross do thou preserve thy Across did Moses inscribe, when with an upright stroke of his rod he divided the Red Sea for Israel who went on foot. Then he turned and smote the sea, once again uniting it over Pharaoh's chariots, with transverse stroke portraying the invincible weapon. Wherefore let us praise in song Christ our God, for he truly is glorified. O cross of Christ, save us by thy might. Of old did Moses foreshadow in himself a type of this faultless passion when he stood between two sacred men of God, for he figured forth the cross with his hands outstretched and raised up trophies in the fight, destroying the dominion of the pestilent Amalek. Hence let us praise in song Christ our God, for he is truly glorified. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. One Moses placed on a pole of that which cured the plague of the serpent's deadly passions bite, and a rescued from the death it brought, and on wood that formed a cross, crosswise did he bind a serpent creeping on the earth, by this sign overcoming the affliction and suffering. Wherefore let us praise in song, Christ our God, for he truly is glorified. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. That mighty trophy, the cross, was revealed by heaven unto the godly-minded king, the champion of piety. Through this all the want and pride of the hateful foes was crushed, deceit was overthrown, and swiftly the divine faith was spread out through the whole earth. Wherefore let us praise in song, Christ our God, for he truly is glorified. The rod is perceived as a figure of the mystery, for it by its blossoming it showed who was chosen to be priest. And for the church that formerly was barren as the wood of the cross now blossomed forth unto strength and steadfastness. O cross of Christ, save us by thy might. The sharp rock that when struck poured forth water for the disobedient and hard-hearted people signified the mystery of the church which was called of God, for the cross is her strength and steadfastness. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. And thine immaculate side was pierced with a spear, water with blood flowed forth, inaugurating a covenant and washing away sins. For the cross is the boast of the faithful, and of kings the strength and steadfastness. In paradise once a tree had stripped me naked, for by its tasting does the foe bring death upon us. But the tree of the cross which granteth unto mankind the garment of life has now been fixed on the earth, and all of the world is filled with a perfect joy. On beholding it lifted up, ye people let us cry out in faith with one accord to God. Full of glory is thy house, O Lord. I have hearkened and heard, O Lord, of thy dispensations, most awesome mystery, and I came to knowledge of thy works, and I sang the praise of thy divinity. O cross of Christ, save us by thy might. With the wood Moses once transformed the bitter springs in the wilderness, foreshadowing the nation's passage unto true religion through the cross. Holy cross of Christ, save us by thy might. The Jordan which had hid in its depth the head of an axe gave it back again because of the handle of wood. 
giving a certain token of the cutting off of her by the cross and baptism. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The people of Israel, divided into four companies, is assembled after the sacred pattern, going on before the symbolic tabernacle of witness, and made glorious by the sign of the cross formed by their hands. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Marvelously spread out, the cross showed forth rays like the sun, and the heavens declared the glory of our God. O tree divine and thrice blessed, whereon Christ God was outstretched, though he is King and Lord of all. He who once had through the tree wrought wicked begarment fell himself because of thee, ensnared when God was nailed unto thee in our mortal flesh, he who grants peace unto our souls. O cross of Christ, save us by thy might. O celebrated wood, O cross whereon Christ was outstretched, the turning sword that guarded Eden was in awe of thee, and the dread cherubim drew back before Christ was nailed to thee, and who grants peace unto our souls. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The hostile powers under the earth shudder when they see the sign of the cross inscribed in the lower earth, wherein they go about. But the race of those in heaven and of the earthborn bow the knee unto Christ, who grants peace unto our souls. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. The divine cross has appeared, shining with glittering rays of light and defiled, and flashing its divine brightness upon the nations, darkened by the error of deceit. It makes them friends of Christ, who was nailed thereto, and who grants peace unto our souls. When Jonas, who was in the belly of the sea monster, stretched forth his hands in the form of a cross, he prefigured the saving passion manifestly. Hence also, when he came forth on the third day, he indicated the supernal resurrection of Christ God, who was crucified in the flesh and enlightened the world by his arising on the third day. O cross of Christ, save us by thy might. Bowed down with age and spent with sickness, Jacob rose upright when he crossed his hands, showing the power of the life-bearing cross. For God who was nailed upon it in the flesh has written anew the oldness of the letter of the shadowy law and has driven away the soul-destroying disease of our own. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. When the divine Israel laid his hands crosswise on the heads of the children, he signified that as the honor due unto the firstborn was set aside, so would be the people served Serving the law, wherefore, when suspected of error in so doing, he changed not the life bearing figure. For cried he, the newly planted people of Christ God, walled about by the cross, shall take the higher place. Thou who wast raised upon the cross of thine own will, O Christ our God, do thou bestow thy compassions upon this thy new commonwealth named after thee, glad in with thy sovereign might our most orthodox hierarchs, and vouchsafe them victory over every false teaching. And as thy help in war may they possess the weapon of peace, the trophy invincible. He that was caught up to the third heaven and to paradise, and heard unspeakable and divine words which it is not lawful for the tongue to utter, that which he wrote to the Galatians, ye as lovers of the scriptures have read and know, Far be it, he says, that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord alone, on which he slew the passions by his passion. Let us all then firmly hold fast to the Lord's cross as our boast, for this wood is our salvation, the weapon of peace, the trophy invincible. The weapon of peace, the trophy invincible. The ungodly tyrant's most insensate decree affrighted common folk, breathing forth with threats and wicked mouthings of blasphemy. But the three children were not struck with fear by rage wild and bestial, nor by roaring fire, 
But in an echoing and dew-besprinkling breeze they stood amidst the fire and sang, O thou supremely praised God of our fathers and our God, forever art thou blessed. O cross of Christ, save us by thy might. The first of mortals, when he had tasted of the tree, dwelt in corruption. For being condemned to be ignominiously cast away from life, he, like some defilement that destroys the whole body, passed on the disease to all his race. But we, the earthborn, finding in the wood of the cross our summons to return, we cry out, O thou supremely praised God of our fathers and our God, forever art thou blessed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Disobedience break the commandment of God, and the tree partaken of untimely brought death to mortals. Henceforth the tree of most precious life was securely enclosed, till that thief of the night, dying a painful death, opened the way to it again as he cried with gratitude, O thou supremely praise God of our fathers and our God, forever art you blessed. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Israel, beholding that which was to come, reverence the top of Joseph's staff, signifying beforehand that the transcendently glorious cross would be the might of the kingdom, for it is a triumphal boast of kings and a light to them that cry with faith. O thou supremely praise God of our fathers and our God, forever art thou blessed. O ye children equal in number to the Trinity, bless ye God the Father and Creator, praise ye the Word who descended and changed the fire into dew and supremely exalt the All-Holy Spirit who grants life unto all forever. O cross of Christ, save us by thy might. As that wood is exalted, which was sprinkled with the blood of the incarnate Word of God, sing praises, you powers of the heavens, celebrating the restoration of mortals. You people worship the cross of Christ, whereby resurrection has been granted to the world and to all the ages. We bless Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Lord. You earth-born stewards of grace, with due reverence exalt with your hands the cross whereon Christ our God stood, and the spear that pierced the body of God the Word. Let all the nations behold the salvation of God, glorifying him unto the ages. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Be glad, you faithful Christian kings who have been chosen by divine decree, receiving from God a precious cross, glory in this triumphal weapon, for thereby the tribes of the enemy that audaciously seek war are scattered unto the ages. Magnify, O my soul, the most venerable cross of the Lord. O Theotokos, thou art a mystical paradise, which being until has blossomed forth Christ, by whom the life-bringing tree of the cross was planted in the earth, in worshipping him now through his exaltation, thee do we magnify. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Magnify, O my soul, the most venerable cross of the Lord. Let all the trees of the forest rejoice, for the nature has been sanctified by him who planted them in the beginning, even Christ, who was stretched out upon the tree through its exaltation now. Him do we worship and magnify. Magnify, O oh my soul, the most venerable cross of the Lord. A sacred horn is raised up for those of godly mind, even the cross of him that is the head of all, wherewith all the horns of the spiritual powers of wickedness are broken. Through its exaltation now, him do we worship and we magnify. The cross is the guardian of the whole world. The cross is the support and staff of the faithful. The cross is the beauty of the church of Christ. 
The cross is the mighty strength of kings. The cross is the glory of angels. It is the wounding of demons. Wisdom, most holy mother of God, save us. More honorable than the cherubim and beyond compare, more glorious than the seraphim, thee who without corruption gave us birth to God the Word, the very Theotokos, thee do we magnify. Glory to you, Christ God, our hope. Glory to you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Holy Father, bless. May Christ, O true God, the prayers of his holy and all pure Mother, with the prayers of St. John the Baptist, of the Holy and all praised Apostles, with the power and honor the protection of the Holy and life-giving Cross, whose universal exaltation we commemorate this day. With the prayers of our fathers among the saints, Ninian and Cuthbert, the bishops of God, Sisoes, the Great of Egypt, Brandon, the Navigator, Oron of Iona, Columba of Iona, Kenneth, Ronan, Molwag, all the saints of all these islands, our protectors and our benefactors. At the prayers of St. John Chrysostom, our Father among the saints, who is falling asleep, we celebrate this day. With the prayers of our Father among the saints, Cyprian, the Bishop of Carthage, whose martyrdom we celebrate this day. With the prayers of the most pious Queen Placilla, wife of Emperor Theodosius the Great. With the prayers of our fathers among the saints who gathered in the Holy and Sixth Ecumenical Council during the reign of Constantine the Fourth, father of Justinian the Second, while Sergius presided over the church in Constantinople. With the prayers of the Holy Martyr Papas of La Ronda in Laconia. With the prayers of the Holy Martyr Theocles who was perfected in martyrdom by the sword. With the prayers of Saint Valerian the Infant who was perfected in martyrdom by the sword. With the prayers of the holy new righteous martyr Macarius, disciple of Saint Nephan, patriarch of Constantinople, who was beheaded in Thessalonica in 1527. With the prayers of our Father among the saints, Maternus, Bishop of Cologne. With the prayers of the holy new horror martyr Ignatius, Archimandrite in Valiuk, who was slain by the atheist in 1932. With the prayers of our Father among the saints, Cormac of Cashel, and those with them whose memory we also keep this day. With the prayers of the holy ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, and of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us. For he is good and he loves mankind. Amen. The prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy upon us and save us. Amen.